Decal baking has been updated in Decal Machine 2.15, and a long-time issue affecting it is finally resolved. Along with that, I've also added a new example file, which looks like this. While still simple, it is more complex and a more realistic use case. The issue that is now resolved is the bake-through problem, where a decal's bake would show up on surfaces behind the intended one. For instance, if you would bake this in previous versions, it would end up on this other side here too. Same for these decals, they would just bake through to these faces on the opposite side where they didn't belong to. This has now been resolved by limiting how far a ray can travel. You can tweak this and maybe further lower the ray distance if you have a second surface in very close proximity behind the primary one. But the default should work well. If a decal ever does not bake at all, you can increase the extrusion distance. But again, it should be good as is, as the decal's height and so distance from the target object's surface should already be good or you wouldn't be able to see it. So let's just do a test bake. And of course, my object here is UV'd already. I mention this because sometimes people come to me and say decal machine doesn't work, and then I check their files and it turns out they don't even have UVs yet. So if you are new to baking, please study the basics first. This is not a general baking tutorial that would be beyond the scope of decal machine. Other people have covered these topics already at length, and there are also add-ons out there that help you with this. This object also has sharps set around most UV borders. For the decal bake, this will ensure it's going to be as flat as possible, and for potential other bakes, it will make them also more manageable should you ever want to touch them up in 2D. For demonstration, I'm increasing the ray distance a lot now, which will reproduce the bake-through issues from previous versions, so you can see what to avoid and how the results should not look. As always, you can follow the progress in the system console, which at least on Windows you can toggle from the window menu here, but you have to do it before you start the bake. So this is what used to happen. Decals would bake on every surface below them, which was a problem if there are multiple, and you'd have to paint this out in post, but with a properly set ray distance, this will no longer happen now. One thing I should point out is if you have decals going across hard edges, like with this panel decal here, then you should make sure the decal shades flat, and so you should disable the normal transfer, which otherwise struggles along sharp edges, and you should probably add an auto smooth mod as well. Now it's nice and flat, just like the surface under it. Another thing, if you have decals on top of other decals, then you will have to invert that overlap for the baking process. So adjust the height accordingly so the top decal is positioned under the other one. The baking process somehow looks at this the other way around, it seems. And now with the ray distance at its default, I know the bake will work out great, and I'm enabling super sampling and increasing the resolution as well. This bake will take considerably longer now, but thankfully I'm only going to bake normals and some temporary support maps. Also definitely switch to the GPU if you have that option. I then select the object that carries the decals and hit the bake button. Two and a half minutes later, the decal normal bake is complete. You can see a preview on the object because I had this enabled here and the bake texture has been saved to disk in your export location. As predicted, there are no more bake through issues at all anymore now and decal normals only appear exactly where the decal objects were placed. Let's have a look at the export folder now and see how flat the baked normals are and how it really only has baked the decal textures and nothing else. No normals or shading from the object carrying the decals at all. To then remove the preview, hit the restore button. The original material will be applied again and the decal objects are revealed again too. Now people keep asking about this and they don't understand that decal machine only bakes decal textures that exist already. They wonder why their material colors aren't baked, for example. It's because normal map decals that imply surface changes don't have their own color. They take it from the object they sit on top of. Simple, subset, and panel decals don't have color maps to bake, only info decals do. For the normal mapped decals, the color exists as a parameter only, a node group input, and it is managed and set through a process called material matching, most of the time by the reapply tool. For instance, if I change this material's color on the main object and then reapply all decals, then they all take on that color too. But again, this only exists in the decal materials as parameters, not in the decal textures. There is nothing to bake. You also don't want decal machine to bake these small patches of color for every decal, nor do you need it. Decal bakes are supplemental, 
and are going to be combined with your other bakes. If you want to make your object red, then bake that red material, and you do that using Blender's native baking tools, not decal machine, or maybe some baking-focused add-on, or perhaps a third-party baking application like Substance or Marmoset. You then layer the decal bakes on top of your other bakes, again, either in Blender itself or in any texturing application. None of this is decal machine's job, nor is high-to-low poly surface baking. And while I don't want to turn this into a tutorial about high-to-low poly baking, I have decided to include some examples that you can look at and study. For instance, if you take a look at this example over here now, it's the same low poly mesh as before and also has sharps set up. But it also has a high poly normal bake and it is mixing it with a decal bake, right? If I disable the normals temporarily and if you take a look at the high poly bake here, you can see it's really only turning the sharp edges into bevels. It barely has any surface information beyond that. Also, the bevels in this normal map actually come from a bevel shader and you can check this out on the high polys material. It's a very simple setup, in my case done via machine tools, but you can do it manually too, or using Zen Barbecue maybe, which gives you greater control. So this is the high poly object here then, and I have it set to display as bounds for simplicity and to get it out of my way. And while its mesh is more dense than the low poly, it still doesn't have these micro bevels modeled out, only hard edges. As I've just mentioned, the bevels are created through the shader at render time by cycles only. Nothing fancy. You totally could model these or any other details too, however, and then bake that to the low poly too. Let's preview the normals again and note that my low poly is far from perfect. You should avoid long triangles like these, for instance, if you can. And I have this streaking here in my shading, but it's good enough for this demonstration. If you are serious about high to low poly baking, Definitely consider Marmoset. Anything but Blender, really. Anyway, the decal normals here have been baked in the same way I've just shown in this video and are here just loaded in from disk now. They look like this. Again, very flat. Just the normals from just the decals. If you then pipe this in, you can see again, it's the hard-edged low poly, but with the decal normals on top now. To combine the high poly bake with the decal bake, you can use a setup like this in Blender or you could combine them in Photoshop or in Substance maybe. There's a second example which is called Smooth and it looks identical at first. The shader setup is exactly the same as well. And the only difference is this object doesn't have sharps, right? It's now purely smooth shaded all over. And here, if you only look at just the high to low poly bake again, it shades identically, right? But of course, the texture itself is quite a bit different here. It has to compensate for the low poly object shading to produce the shading of the high poly object. And it does so very well, I have to say. The combining of the normals is then also the same. What I should point out is if you want to bake your decal normals on a super smooth shaded object like this, then you should add a temporary auto smooth mod to it. This will ensure the decal bake is again as flat as possible. Otherwise, some of that object's smooth shading gets carried over into the decal bake, and that's not going to be ideal. As before, pay attention to decals that go across hard edges now, and make sure the decal shades accordingly too. Let's go back to the first object again, and let me take you through this process now. I've baked the decals already at the beginning, so can disable the decal objects now, and I do that by excluding the collection here. I then make sure the high poly is selected first and I quickly verify it renders correctly in cycles with the bevel shader by going into local view. After leaving local view, I shift select the low poly last and navigate to the bake settings. Set the bake type to normal and activate selected to active. You can set the ray distance to zero here now and maybe increase your extrusion distance if necessary to ensure the low poly covers all of the high poly in the absence of using a cage. Then in the material of the low poly's object, you need to have an active image texture node. I continue by creating a new image for that image node and set my bake resolution. You can optionally use 32-bit normals, but it's not necessary. Set up a name if you want to. And remember to always set your normal textures to use the non-color color space. It's such an awkward, cumbersome process, isn't it? If you do this regularly, definitely look into Marmoset instead. But anyway, let's start the bake now.
And there you go. It's finished already, and Blender has made it active here too. Let's see how it looks on our mesh. Very well. And let's actually preview it properly as a normal map. Like this. And there you go. A nice high to low normal bake. Let's then load a decal normal bake too. And instead of navigating to my export folder, I'm just going to reuse the existing one from the decal machine resources folder here. Again, pipe it into a normal map node. Preview that. Looks good. To combine the two, start by subtracting a normal map node without any input. If you isolate this, you can see the baked decal normal map in tangent space here. And this here is then just the mesh geometry's normals, also in tangent space. By subtracting, you can then nicely isolate only the detail coming from the baked decal normals. Looking at the baked high poly normals in tangent space, you can see these nice smooth transitions where the mesh's hard edges are, creating the micro bevels. And with the decal normals now isolated, you can finally bring both of these bakes together using an add vector node, mixing the high poly bake with the detail decal bake like that. A perfect merge. And as I mentioned before, you can bake the other decal textures too, like the color textures from Info Decals. Also emission, as well as AO and curvature for simple, subset, and panel decals as well as some masks, including for the subset parts, which will be useful for composing all of these together. So this concludes this updated baking demo then. Understand that with baking, you do lose some major benefits of decals, in particular in terms of resolution and detail. A major benefit is, of course, that you can now take this into a texture painting application to add wear and tear on top of it. The AO and curvature and mass bakes should come in handy for that, but also consider using atlases or trim sheets as a potential alternative export method instead. I hope that helped and managed to shine a bit of light into the darkness. Just a heads up though, please don't ask me for help with your high to low poly baking issues as it really is outside the scope of Decal Machine and there are many good resources and tools about that topic already.